Ready to go. Hey, Todd, how are you? What's up? Oh, you got the Strong as Fred t-shirt on. I like it. That's right. Every time I get on video, every time I make a video in my basement, I get, this is the only time I wear this shirt. Nice. <laughs> this shirt has never been out of my basement. Oh, that's gold. That's gold. I'm well, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice. I, uh, uh, I just got back from California. You know, I lost ten pounds in one week in California. Wow, was that was that was there beer involved or no beer involved? Yeah, because when you drink beer, you don't you don't eat food. You don't, you don't eat. You know? <laughs> but, uh, I think I'll get it back. Oh, that's good. But, I don't know. It's a it's you can't spend your whole life trying to stay two fifteen. Yeah. And then try to get up to 240 in six months, you know, yeah, it just yeah, don't yeah, work. Yeah. yeah, so what, what What are you right now? What, 225 or something? 230? 225. 225, there you go. Yeah, it's really artificial for you to really just push that weight and eat that much food, isn't it? You get all fat in the face and all that sort of crazy stuff when you eat like that. It's crazy. Well, yeah, because what happens is, is like, if I force feed, if I get up at night, if I uh, eat all that, then a weekend comes along, I take a weekend off or some shit happens, and I lose five, six pounds, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I, I'm sitting right at 210. 210 is my evening weight. Two, uh, if I, 207 is my morning weight, so that's all right. I've got to be 200 pounds for the season this this year, so I'm I'm happy where I'm at and just water cut to 200 pounds come come the time when they give me the 200 is what WAL, so... Is it 200 pounds for all WAL, or is it match-specific? I think it's match-specific to the middleweight. Uh, but but that said, like, I know Jordan Sill and and um, Storm pulled at 210 last year. I don't know. So I think you can beg and steal and borrow and get your way into whatever weight you need it to be if you really want to push for it. But I've been told 200 pounds is where I'm going to be for the season. Okay. And it used to be 195. Yeah. 200 makes more sense than 195 just because it's a round number. Yeah. I like 200 you know. much more than 195. <laughs> 195 is getting, getting too light for me. I don't know. I don't want to be that light anymore. But anyway, yeah. I, I was... Well, I made, 190, I made 195 from 220. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You get, I know last time I did a weight cut, you weren't very impressed. And, uh... <laughs> I am, I am I'm appalled at your weight cut. I'm so scared to do it your way uh, because I've, I've kind of done it like that once before and it... And I, and I near, near killed me, but I stuff. I don't know what I did wrong, but it was it was so hard compared to the long gradual. But anyway, maybe. but like but like everything, you should get better. Yeah, you did it once and quit. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? You would kids would never ride bicycles if they had your philosophy. That's yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, they might rollerblade instead. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would smoke if they followed your and try it once. It would suck. They would quit. Yeah. There would be no tobacco industry at all. <laughs> anyway, there would be no porn industry. That, you know, you would destroy porn and tobacco and children's bicycles. There we go. <laughs> anyway, I was very pleased to hear um, your comments the other day that you said I've grad. It's time for me to graduate from the beginners class to the intermediate class. We probably should have done this months ago, really. I mean, we probably should have. Mm. But, uh, I mean, I, I still feel good. I still feel good training. I don't feel like I'm really uh, – I've, I've got six main vectors that I've been uh, cycling through, and it still feels like there's progression. It hasn't felt like it's too hard to hit hit another extra kilo or two on each uh, six-week round. So it, it's going all right still. Um, well, and, and you can – Look, you, you can keep doing that. Mm. What you don't want to do is hit a plateau the one week, come back the next week, then try to figure out what you're going to do. So, yeah. um, as long as you know, as long as you're getting stronger, there's a lot of people out there who mm. don't know if they're getting stronger or not. So, as long as you're getting stronger, you can continue. If it's working, yeah. you don't have to stop. Yeah. But sooner or later, you're going to have to change something. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, I'm way pa- I'm way past the forty four percent game that everyone <laughs> likes to laugh at now <laughs> uh but I, anyway but um i mean I, I gave you some shit about that in california too but the fact is, is a bunch of that it's just because you were just new to yeah it. it's efficiency you know 
Big time. Yeah, when when, uh, when high school kids start bench pressing, mm. their bench goes up crazy fast in the first six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but they don't gain, you know, they don't gain 30 or 40% every six months. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. When, when you start learning something. It's like when you were learning tennis, right? Yeah. Your skills probably got 44% better in six months with a real coach just because you were learning how to do shit. Yeah, you know? 100%, 100%. It's fun, though. I, I, I enjoy that. <laughs> it's it's turned that what started out as um as the trolls walking all over me has now ended up uh being no one can say 44 percent without thinking thinking of my my workouts now so <laughs> i'm happy <laughs> anyway well uh, and also it, at least it shows people are watching your videos yeah. or else they wouldn't know that that was 44 <laughs> right yeah that's it but um so what what do you recommend like if we are going to upgrade this to the intermediate um level what are we adding? What are we doing? All right. Hold on. Just, I got a camera person. Hey, Renee. All right. I'm going to show you a couple of different things. I'm going to work. Uh, we'll, I'll go over the changes to the routine okay. that, I, that you should consider. And then I'll show you a couple of uh, other things. Yes. So I'm going to hand the phone off to my videographer there. All right. All right. So first, ah, let's get this. Okay, I, mean, I thought I could put this on the table. Oh, I can. Okay, so get that on the camera. Can you see that? Yeah, it's pretty blurry, but yeah, I can see it. You might have to read it to me. There we All go. Right, there so, we go. There we go. I can see it now. Okay, still, it's still three days, three days a week. Yep. Three days, we're switching from eight by three to 24 reps. Okay. I don't care if you do 12 by two. Uh, six by four, eight by three, or five by five. Yep. Okay. That's the only change there. Biceps, I just made it. Biceps are bobbing. We know that. Yep, yep. And I'm going to show you. The, I'm going to show you a variation of biceps. Max day doesn't change. Mass day is 24 reps. I do six by six. Yep. Add pounds to it every single week until I can't. No. The yep. other thing we are going to change is on speed day and mass day. Yep. Pick your three. Main your three weak vectors, and I'll cycle through these. Okay. So, speed day week one is vector one. Week two is vector two. Week three is vector three. Then it, then it re- All right. So, we're now doing the conjugate method on speed day and math day. Okay. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Constant variation. You can't let you, you don't want to get stale. And the plateau happens mentally before it happens physically. Yep. So, so, so I, if you're, if you're, I've always done the same vector on speed day, max day, and volume day within the same week. Uh, is that is that no good, or you 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 want to you want me to have three? You're different not going to do that anymore. All right, three. You're so, not doing that anymore. All right, so three different you're, vectors. You're, you're, yep. In you're a week. Take your same six to eight vectors for max day. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. But speed day and mass day rotate through three vectors you pick. Okay. And this is something we're going to follow for the next six months. Okay. Sounds then in good. six months, we're going to change it up again. Sounds All right? Good. Sounds good. So, and the, and the three vectors you do on speed day do not have to be the same three vectors on math day. Okay. All right? So, your speed day vectors can be all hook vectors, and your math day vectors can be all top rolls. Mm-hmm. Or it could be two hook, one top roll, two top roll, one hook. I don't care because we're not training for – a victory, and we're not training for the short term. We're training to be strong yep. for a long period. Long term. All right. Evening. No more plyometric. Oh, okay. Evenings are always isometric. Yep. And uh, just just to save you time, it's always the vector you did yep. the, in the morning, so you don't have to set your gym back up again. Beautiful. Okay. So whatever vector you max out on, that's what you do iso. Whatever vector you did speed day on, so this day. You're you're doing isometrics on three mm. vectors. This day it's isometrics on three vectors. This day it's isometrics on six, eight, or twelve, or whatever you pick. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Bicep bobblies, triceps are now just JM presses. Yep. You know what a JM press is? Uh, not off the top of my head, but it, I'm, I'm assuming is it a in a kind of out like that, like palm sort of. You can YouTube it. Yep, and, I, and I'll show it to you. But you can YouTube it. There's a video on YouTube of JM, okay. the guy who invented it. 
it's describing how to do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we put a little variation on it, both on biceps and triceps, wide, medium, narrow grip. Beautiful. He doesn't recommend wide, medium, and narrow on the triceps. Yep. On the JM press, but we do it. And I'm going to tell you something. This bicep and tricep volume, I was kind of hinky on it earlier. I guarantee you this shit will fix your elbow. Yeah, it's nice. I've had three, I've had three big practices this year. In the last three or four months, I've been to Indianapolis, Chicago, and San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. And then Indianapolis, I arm wrestled for about three hours straight. Chicago, probably five hours straight. And then California, I was there seven and a half hours. I bet you I had an hour to 90 minutes of break out of all of it. Yep. So elbows never got sore or tired. Yeah, nice. Afterwards. Not during the practice, not two days after. Shoulders did. Yeah. I moved the I moved the weak point of my arm out of my elbow <laughs> into my shoulder. And nobody trained shoulders. We trained shoulders, yep. but nobody else does. Yep. So that is so huge. That means that not only can you like recklessly just throw your shit into your elbow <laughs> and not worry about it, you know it's not weak anymore. Yeah, no, that's exciting. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Question so far. No, I'm happy. I'm I'm good. I'm listening at the moment. Oh, good. All right, I'll show you the JM press. Yep. And then I'm going to cover some hand training shit. So JM press is always by one just stand over here. So, triceps are always triceps and biceps are mobbly. Yep. I do. I try to get to 200 reps when I do it. And I try to do it in six six sets. Okay. But if, see, the thumbs, so it's an uncovered thumb grip. So yep. the thumbs are right, on. Sir. All right. And a normal skull crusher brings the bar. And a tricep extension brings the bar here. Yep. A JM press. You bring the bar down, okay. like towards your neck, yep. and it stops when your forearm hits your bicep. Yep, gotcha. So the bigger your biceps are, the bigger your forearms are. <laughs> so like Eric Smiles, JM press stops yeah. here. <laughs> Devin Lorette, JM press would stop on the head of that. Okay, mine stops right here. Yep. So it comes down from here. You press it up, unlike a tricep extension where you're you're forcing it in, but yep. it's comes down here and you, you can feel it activate those tendons nice. and then you press it up beautiful and we go those medium narrow and wide so jm doesn't recommend a wide one but once again it comes down here it stops see on the wide grip mm. it hits my neck yep but it presses up and the bobbling helps but it uh yeah, for me that will strengthen that elbow it helps the way I practice, when I get tired, I'm crazy into my elbow. If my elbow isn't sore or hurt after an easy six solid hours of arm wrestling. Yep. Everybody in California, yep. this shit will fix your elbows. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I do agree. So far, I would say that tricep, tri anything involving triceps for volume has been the biggest factor on repairing my elbow, without a doubt. Yeah. Now, since you're a top roller, and I arm wrestle top rollers, Here's a variation for hammer curls. Mm -hmm. I just got dish towels, but you could probably use straps or anything else. Yep. <laughs> just, loop them, just loop them over the bar and on a wide grip, make sure you get in close where you can see my hands. Through. So this way, I do these from a dead stop, but with a wide grip, you pull up and it throws pronation into the ribs. Yep. yep. So it still works the elbow, but we're going to go into a hand training exercise here. Yes. My hand train register is quick. I believe in training the hand through engaging the bigger muscle groups. Yep. So which, which guess train your hands with lat exercises. Train your hands with bicep exercises. Which but guess, with a wide which, grip, which, which you guess my is out. Does your arm guess, does your arm guess out, or does your pronation and your wrist guess out on that? Both my arm goes completely straight at this point. Here, like, move the camera. Wait, wait. Go up over here and stop right there. So from here, my arm's completely straight. Yep. And then I bicep curl and I pronate the wrist up. Yep. 
Sorry, I, that's not a wide grip. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask when it gets to medium the, grip. When it gets to the medium length. grip, it's more of a knuckle forward. We got, we got we got delays in communication. We're all good. I apologize. But t- Todd, the question I was trying to get out was um, when the lactic acid uh, reaches its maximum and you kind of get to failure on those volume movements, is it failure in your bicep or is it failure in your hand and wrist? Excellent question. It's not that's that question is no longer pertinent now that you're no longer a beginner. Okay. You're gonna pick a volume. Yep. Okay. I pick. 55 pounds, 200 reps. Yep. That's a volume of 11,200 pound reps. Yep. Yep. I stick with that for one to three months. Yep. And then I, end. we are no longer doing volume to failure. Okay. Sweet. So you're not leaving the gym blasted. You're not leaving the gym wore out anymore. You do not, even if you can do more volume, you don't do more. You okay. step your volume up on a one or a two month cycle now. Yep. You want to have all the energy you can for speed, mass, and volume day. Yep. Volume on biceps, wrists, and triceps are, it's purposely, but you want it to be hard, but not kill. Yeah, gotcha. You want to feel like you could do more, and then, okay, once you feel like I can do more, I can do more, I can do more, next month, I'm going to add a little. Yep. So you, when you get to this part, which is the last part of the program, you know you're going to get all your sets and reps in. Yeah, yeah. The question is, is, as you get stronger, you just get done quicker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, sounds good. Yeah. We're not killing ourselves in the gym anymore. And then when you do a close grip hammer curl with this, it completely changes the angle of the arm. Yep. So now my hands are turned in and I wrist curl up. Yeah, nice. It looks good. I, wrist, I mean, I bicep curl the whole thing up. Okay. So that's our bicep volume. We did our tricep volume on your, are you doing a lap day? Anything in the back of the road? Uh, yeah, on um, Thursday for me, uh, I'm doing some single arm dumbbell rows. Um, so, but it's not, the, I, did, I do it as part of a six by six. Okay. On your lap day, you have to stand over here. Once again, we like training our hands. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, hold on. We like training our hands by pulling up the, uh, train your hands and your wrists through the major muscle group. Yep. So this is a four-inch pipe. Yep. You got a kid in there? Yeah, I got Bradley. You got a kid in there, I want to say, hey, that's fine. Bradley, all right, come and say hello to Uncle Todd. <laughs> Brad, come on, come around again. Hang on. All right, get to this by cable reach. It'll be interesting to see. Okay. It'll be interesting to see what Bradley's got to say. We told him we were doing this recording. I said it's got to be important. All right, come on, Brad. What is it? Yeah, it's not even working. Oh, the iPad's not working. YouTube. That's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley, it's not working. You know what? The iPad in America's working. <laughs> All right. All right, we're back. Straight up pull ups on a four inch pipe. Yep. Now, okay. four inch. Nice. Higher. Four inch for the simple fact that if you see my hand, uh-huh. I can't I can't completely wrist curl on it. Now, these pull-ups are a lot easier yeah. if you crimp your wrist on You get your wrist, mm-hmm. and you, if you pinch with your fingertips the pipe into your forearm. Yep. But that's not what we're doing. We're trying to palm it. What we're trying to do is simulate that guy having a bigger hand than you, mm-hmm. where you can't wrist curl him, but you can by holding your hand flat still engage either your side pressure or back pressure. Yep, yep. The other thing about these pull-ups is, and the crossfitter show it, it's easier to do a pull-up. I think kipping is when you, like, you pull up with your arms going down. Mm-hmm. We're not doing that. We're we're actually pulling up like a monkey would. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to grab. The force is you can keep your hands flat. If, if, if you concentrate on wrist curling, you can do it, you know. But it's just a straight pull up on a four inch pipe where the only thing touching the pipe is fingertips to hand. Yeah. No arm, nothing like that. Gotcha. Um, now I'm doing like three sets and I think I can do six. I think I'm up to maybe seven now. But every month I try to add like another one or two reps. Okay. How many, how many reps per set? So if I'm doing three sets of seven, next month I'll do uh, a set of eight. 
seven seven, and then the next month eight eight seven. Yep. And then eight eight eight, and then nine eight eight. That way. Gotcha. Creep the volume up slowly but steadily. Okay. You don't want the volume to kill you. Yeah, I, I, I look at that and I think I'm going to struggle. I look at the size of that pipe and I'm like, damn, that thing. <laughs> it's going to be brutal. Yeah. I can see myself slipping off it. Well, the volume, yeah. And the, the volume's recuperative. Yep. But you have to, there's a link between the volume and your side pressure maxes. Yep. I don't know what that relationship is yet. We'll, yeah. we'll figure that out. Yep. But you can't kill yourself on the volume because then it just takes away what you can do on the maxes. Yeah. And the maxes is what's important. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, my, my bobbly weight biceps at the moment, uh, I've been doing three sets of 60 um, with uh, the same, I think the same weight that you've got, I think. is Okay, then I'd go ahead and uh, I'd add weight just because of the, the, the time. Yeah. You know, so if it's 60 times, say, 50 pounds, mm-hmm. that's 3,000, that's, 3, that's 30,000, right? Yeah. Well, you can, it's, it's that 30,000 number you want to push up. It's yeah. not the rest. Gotcha. It's the weight times the reps number you want to push up. So if you, like, triple the weight, you yep. can cut the reps down by the third. Yep, for sure. Todd, give me one second. just got to sort out Brad. Uh, that, I think that's basically all I got. Nice, okay. Well, so the the biggest differences summing up was getting rid of plyometrics. We're doing isometrics every afternoon on those Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Um, we've got some variations in, uh, the, the vectors of speed day and volume day are now different. They're not the same all week. Um, and what else was the major thing? We're not going to go to volume. Don't, don't constantly push for a new volume every day or every workout. Yep. Hold the volume back to a, a one to a three month cycle. Yeah, cycle your speed and max day, uh, your speed and ma- uh, volume day. Max day doesn't change. Yep. Um, and yeah, the elbow, the elbow volume works. There, yeah, my, there's my, no my, doubt. My, my elbow's been sore this week, um, and it's I, I put it down to in the last month I did an absurd amount of table time, and I went really, really, really hard. I, I pulled multiple clubs, pulling the whole club for hours, and. Um, and I think it just it just caught up to me a bit, and, I, and I've been doing a lot of volume um, in the last couple of days. Just like I've added extra volume in the last couple of days, just to try to speed that recovery process up. And I've uh, I've back. I, I didn't do, uh, for instance, yesterday. I didn't do the the heavy vector work that I would normally have done. I just said we'll just keep going on volume for a while. Um, uh, and so I'm thinking maybe next week is when I'll be back to as in next week is in two or three days time. Um, will be when I get back on the vectors again. Okay. Yeah, I uh, my elbows haven't bothered me at all out of my last three. But I don't. Then again, I'm not on a, I'm not on the table as often as you are. Yeah, yeah. But I when I'm on the table, I'm on I'm on it solid. And like I said, in California, I know I've got six hours of pulling. Yeah. I mean, to where little kids were beating me. Yeah. You know, and I was trying as hard as I could to beat little kids. But it wasn't my elbow. It was my shoulders. I you know, on my hand because there's a lot of tall people out there. But. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And the, um, the other, the other really cool thing, Todd, is my left my left arm is like suddenly starting to arrive. The the gap between my left and right is now not. It, it used to be thirty percent. It's now like six or seven percent. Oh, that, the gap between my right and left is twenty percent, and I've been training it for years. Yeah, well, I, I was really like legit. I was so stunned. Um, it. I don't know why, but suddenly my left, my left in my elbow has just made a big step up, and it's now right behind my right. It's real close. There are some things like back pressure movements. My left will outperform my right. Yep. There you go. <laughs> you know, but but on a straight up on a wrist wrench high pulley side pressure movement, yep. my right will easily beat my left by twenty pounds. It's not even close. I mean, it's it's, it's drastic, but. Yeah, this, Any, this most low pulley work, my left will beat my left will beat my right on most low pulley work. Yeah, well, this 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 was low pulley low pulley back pressure that I first noticed it. It was only I only had two and a half kilos difference, um, and my left yeah. actually my left left actually felt. It just, I thought my left was going to win, but my right still got over the line. But I was just stunned. Um, but on the table as well, uh, when I was over in Florida and in Arizona, my left was just able to legitimately hold people that I thought there's no way I'd normally be able to hold them. So 
it's good to see uh, the left's finally starting to turn up. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to train both of them because I, I, I think, I think you're if you don't train it, I think you can one will hold the other one back, especially if you got to do box barbell movement. Yeah, stuff, you yeah. know. For sure. Awesome, Todd. Well, thank you so much for the updated program. This is the intermediate. I look forward to graduating to the advanced. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, by then you'll be inventing yourself. Yeah. Because you, know? you got to look at you got to look at your opponents and your matches, and then. But you know the the, the philosophy is still simple. We didn't make a major major strategic change. Yeah. Pretty soon it comes down to okay, what's a better bicep movement? Hammer curls or straight curls? What's a better tricep? You know. Yep. That's where we start fighting over a one or two percent difference in the program. Yep, for sure. Nice. Oh, well, thank you very much as always, and uh, good luck with your your prep for the WAL season. Thank you, right. and uh, tell your family, hey. All right, thanks, Todd. See ya. Bye. Yes, that's a bet. <laughs>